Um, I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, are you recording these sessions? Yes. Yes, we are recording this session. Okay. I believe my screen is as invisible to everyone can see my screen and hear me clearly, right? So request everyone to put in the chat. Yes, if you can see the screen. I request everyone to just quickly put in the chat. Yes, if you can see my screen and I'm audible to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So. So now, today's session, what is the agenda of today's sessions? What we're going to like, you know, see the topics about. So with this today's sessions, we have been there at the point where we can understand why and what are means by the security, why we require the security team, and what are the several different departments are there. So I'm going to take you with certain examples where you can get understand how the but you know the process happens in real scenario what are the several teams will be involved and what are their operations are there? so it would be quite like you know interesting concept to this because we're going to get into the it domain and we can understand what are the inside the teams are there why we require several team in order to secure our like you know uh, assets or the different operations so let's let's do start so without any delay, I'm going to start with the very basic process which we have discussed in the last session. So whenever we build the security, that's a very important part that's called as the information security. In that we have something called as a CIA triad, which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability, which is plays major role building the security. So where it can be applicable, it is applicable in the wide range of services when I talk about security. Either it can be called as a physical security, cloud security, network security, application security, endpoint security, or overall, if I talk about the cybersecurity process. So whenever we build the security systems, that's are based on this CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So this is applicable with a wide range of services in order to design the security. So if you know something about the defense, like, you know, uh, defense in depth so that's uh, from applications network there are the multiple layers of like you know assets are there which it need to be get secure based on the CIA right even there are the different type of policies created by an organization that can be a third party policies or that can be a internal policies for an organization when they build it so that makes sense with based on the CIA triad standards they're going to be working so this is how the confidentiality, integrity, and availability will be based on. So we're going to discuss that in detail in coming session, what exactly the parameters are there, how we can maintain the confidentiality, how we can maintain the integrity, as well as the availability of a system. So this is based on this standard we have designed the security. So as well as we have discussed in the last session, if you remember that, we have discussed there are the type of hackers are there. We have white hat hackers. We have black hat hackers, we have the gray hat hackers. So what exactly the job profile, what they're going to do? So as we know very well, the black hat hackers are nothing but that's are the cyber criminals which are going to attack on the systems. They're going to find out the vulnerabilities. They're going to do this attack for the personal gain. So those are the normal things where, like, you know, the attackers are trying to attack it. But if I talk about the white hat hacker, who these guys are? So these guys are like they are the security expert they put all their like you know skill set in order to protect it so they use a different type of technology its efforts and process so i mean to say that it's not like you know there are two buttons are there the the attackers are pressing pressing some button like a red button and doing an attack and that attack is happening and there is a like you know cyber security team has a white hat hackers they're pressing one button where they can securing the organization's asset. It's not like that. Even the attackers put their efforts. They have some, like, you know, 
a professional way to find out like you know what type of vulnerabilities are there they also gotta put it like you know certain investment on tools in order to purchase those and use up for the attack purpose and we as a security expert we also use our skill set we're going to penetrate different applications find out those vulnerabilities in order to secure like you know the assets so let's have a look on detail about that how it works so white hat hackers if i talk about it so white hat hackers are the good guys they are the ethical hackers as we can see that so we always use our skill set for like you know defensive system we always focus on genuine license softwares we do the penetration penetration testing based on the parameters which have been getting from the client or like you know need to be get secure it penetration testing now what do you mean by the penetration testing can anybody give me a basic uh, definition if you know that or if you have uh, some idea penetration testing have you heard about that anytime i don't know what it is yeah. All right. So let me tell you that the penetration testing is nothing but let's say like an example. We have certain application, right? So when we have an application, the attackers may attack to that application directly. That happens. They can find out the vulnerabilities, and they're gonna take it like you know use of that. So before before the attacker discover any vulnerabilities, we have some testing things, right? Now we are going to perform certain attack on a particular application with with the intention of like you know securing that application so we're gonna find out the way how the attacker may get entered into that application and we're gonna do the patch management we're gonna like you know uh, secure that application so the more we do the penetration testing the more secure applications can be there so example we find certain ways that like you know the attacker may attack on that right so what are the possible ways that the attacker may get into let me give you one simple quick example. Let's see that we are doing some business in gold and jewelries, diamonds, like that. So the very first thing is what we have done. We went to the market, we, we brought one locker and we put all the gold jewelry and like, you know, diamonds in that, that locker. So what happened? One day one guy came and he, he well skilled with that and easily he opened that locker and he took all our gold and jewelries and like you know other uh, other stuff whatever we have so at this point what happens to us is that we need to be a financial losses with that attack yes or no everyone put it in the chat is that clear So it, it lead to be a financial loss when when this type of like you know processes happen. So somebody have taken certain little things and it's getting a huge loss to us. Now what we have decided? Now we decided no, we don't need to go to the market. Now we need to go to the corporate to design, like you have to go to the particular company to get like you know some standard lockers. So we have given some specifications. We have seen our requirement. We even talked about some past attack which has happened. So based on that, we have got one locker. There's a customized locker with all go all all the all the specifications what we have sent out. Now once we brought that, we put it all our gold and everything again back to it. But suddenly we got an idea. Like, you know, if it is again and the attack happens, apart from those parameters. We have some specific parameter we have done that, but it may be happens beyond that, right? That that might be a possible disaster. So what we have done, like you know, we have announced that certain companies, certain individual teams and process, and we says that, like you know, hey bros, like you know, we have a locker, come and use your skill set and open this route. And but there is some condition. The condition is that whatever the method you use to open that. I want to be get listed on. I want that a particular document because I'm going to work on that, uh, like you know, method, and I'm going to save my locker from those attacks. So the person A came, 
and he put all his efforts and he have opened that account locker and he given the specification he given the document this is at the procedure this is the vulnerabilities are there through which i have opened and i i, I have taken all those actions so now the second person comes and he used some other method third person fourth fifth sixth and so on it's like the more we test the application the locker the more strong locker will be become right do you agree everybody now so what i'm doing it i'm just replacing the locker to the application so when we have the application we are doing this type of testing is called as a penetration testing penetration testing is nothing but finding out the vulnerabilities how the attackers may get entered into it so once we find out that we're going to do the patch management of is it so clear everybody give me the quick okay No, we're not involved. We're not inviting the people to hack the application. This is this is this is just a kind of example. It about the project, like you know, the client, the asset owner, the applications owner are going to outsource that applications for the secure to secure that to the different team, or they have some internal team in order to secure that. So certain certain process if this happens in that group. Yeah, that certain applications Am I audible? Yeah. So this is how the pen testing is can happen. All right. So is that so clear, everyone? Just give me a quick okay. John, Khatija, Miko, and Michael, Muhammad, Nasir, Saad, everybody. Swapna. Give me a quick okay if it is all clear to you. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, thank you. All right. So as a security specialist when we have been working, we never use our skill for illegal purpose. We we use always our skill for like you know to improve the security for an organization. When I talk about the black hat hackers, so black hat hackers, as we know, like this are the computer criminals. They exploit the vulnerabilities for their personal gain. They have only one motive to make it like huge profit with the attack. They always use their skill for their personal gain. They're going to hack the bank, they steal the credit card. Like, you know, they, they, they're going to use like, you know, different type of skill set in order to steal the information, like the personal information, placing different type of malware. So the malware is something but the malicious code. It can be in the form of like, you know, the any any kind of malware they may get designed in order to get an access or to steal the information that that might be a person that's how the black hat hackers are there. 
if I talk about the gray hat hackers, they also the computer expert. They disclose the security flaws to the public. Like, you know, it, it is a sim simple way. It's like a cat on the wall. We don't know where it's going to be jumped. Either it can be white or it can be the black. So it's straight into the border between white and black. It depends upon the condition. They're going to mix up. So reason either it can be ethical or unethical, depending upon the conditions and the circumstance, uh, uh, circumstance at their hand where they can be do like, you know, the attack pattern. This is how the, you know, the type of hackers, type of attackers may do. Now, when I talk about the attack, attack is not happens only from the outside. It may also happen from inside. Like, you know, we have internal team, like, you know, internal team can be HR team, sales team, accounting team, construction team. We have like, you know, the different team, like information technology team, where we can see the developers. We have like, you know, front end engineer, full stack, test engineer, Python with uh, like, you know, skill with the Python, Java, .NET and so on. We have like, you know, the in IT infrastructure team, that's the system team, network team. So they design the entire network. They see the network topologies, what type of assets they have it, what are the database they have it. We have like, you know, the IT security team, which is the backbone of any organization. We have like, you know, the SOC team, which is especially focusing on like, you know, managing the different type of process here. So I mean to say that like, you know, in a very simple note, when we talk about this, we have, we have the organization's asset. Let's take an example. So this is an organization assets we have it. So where the business is running on that, the attack may happen from the outside of this. So we know that this is nothing but we can consider that as something called as a external threat. That can be external threat to the organization. We know that this is has been done mostly by the attackers. As we have seen, like you know, let's see that this is as a hackers or black cat hackers we can say that. That these are the possibilities of it. But this is how the threat will be there. But also there is from inside the thread. Inside thread is also can be there. That will consider as internal thread. So we have this internal thread as well. Here. Now internal thread, how it is happened from where it has been done. So if I talk about the internal thread, that's not nothing but inside the team we have it. So the team can be in the form of sales team, as we have seen, marketing team, it can be the HR team, or it can be anything, so on. As we know that, it depends upon the organization business side. We have the several team. So that may be happens with the intentionally, or it can be an accidentally. It depends upon lack of awareness, like, you know, the people have no idea about, like, what is going on. They don't know how to do use those assets. Those are the possibilities are there where the attack may happen. And those type of attack may consider as internal threat here. So we have the internal threat and external threat that need to be get focused and like, you know, go and secure those assets here. So here we can see that we have the several team here. Now, let me give you an example here. I want to relate with the civil engineer here. Now, what exactly the civil engineer will do it generally? As we know, like the civil engineer there into the construction. It's going to construct like building, house, villas, malls, and so on. But how is going to construct that? Like, you know, while doing this construction, he may get interact with the several teams like architect team, like, you know, masons, like, you know, tile workers, plumbers, electricians, like, you know, uh, painters, and so on. So there are the several team are there. The civil engineer must have the coordinations with them. How? the plan is going on is that the according to like you know what we have decided it's going the constructions the, the same way or not if the civil engineer is not able to get communicate with the team or there is a lack of communication do you think like the constructions will go smoothly or it will go as per the plan do you think like it's going to be happen like this, that if the civil engineer is not getting like you know uh, there is a lack of uh, communication gap between like, you know, civil engineer in other team. Do you think, like, it's going to be happen smoothly all the work? Just put in the chat quickly. Yes or no? Obviously, no, right? So, it's not going to be happens that because there is required a coordination. There is a required process. The civil engineer need to get approved, like, you know, 
all things which is going on as per like the plan, perfections, quality, assurance, and so on. So that's a very important part when it is comes on that. Now, if I relate this with an IT world, now if I relate with the cyber security team, simple way. So we have a cyber security expert team. The cyber security expert team, which not just focusing on external attack, but also like, you know, it, it call about all over the security, all over about the security, either it can be the external, either it can be the internal. So it might happen from the external attack or it might happen from the internal attack. So there is a cyber security team, which is always like, you know, check and activities, what is happening on the assets. So if I talk about the internal team, like we have HR team, we have something called as like, you know, the marketing team. We have example, like, you know, network team. We have like, you know, finance team. So this is other, some, some of an example. Every organization have this several team here. And as we know, like they are operating our assets. They have been using certain corporate network and they are using like, you know, the process here. So we know that there is a team which are been like, you know, well uh, accessing those components, like, you know, what are the devices they have it. And based on their activities, that might be a cyber attack may happen to the organization. Maybe they're going to the, like, you know, malicious website, or they may be going to the certain website where they're downloading some free softwares or like, you no know, games and so on. That might be anything is possible, which contain the malware, I get it, may get exploited. So that's the reason we're not just been like, you know, focusing on external threat, but also we need to check about the internet threat, what type of activity is happening and how we're going to secure that. This is how, where I have just related with like, you know, the normal team, what we have it example with the security team. So the security expert must have the well coordinations with the entire team need to check like, you know, what type of activity is happening what type of vulnerabilities are there and how we're going to fix those. So to get you a better understanding about this, I would like to take you with an example. Now for this example, I want you to get understand that we are taking, like, you know, we are going to form a company, how the IT involved in this. So I want you to take this like a story and this just make it relate as you and me are doing the business. Let's take an example. Me and Khatija is doing the business. Me and Michael is doing. My me and Michael is doing. So let's see that we both are like you know, doing an individual business. We we planning to start this business. Here. So for that we are going to build a company first. So what this business is about? This business is about the media advertising company. For that, where we do the print media banners, hoarding, brochures, and so on. Let's take an, a very simple example. So this is at the company which are building it in order to like, you know, do the business. Now, over this company, first when we launch, we require some assets. So we purchased two computers. This computer installed with well software, like, you know, Photoshop, Corel, Draw, After Effects. We have like, you know, the printers to print the data and we have like, you know, the routers to like, you know, obviously connect with ISPs and getting access to internet. So we are the two person, you and me, and with the four IT assets. So there are two computers, one printer, one, like, you know, we can see the router. So that can be considered as, uh, like, you know, the four IT assets with like, you know, two person, you and me are the two person. We have started this business. Now, when we have started, you and me with the four IT assets here, who we are in general. Are we the technical person or the creative person? Look, a business they're into, like, you know, creating ads, creating, like, you know, like, you know, different type of images, browsers, like, you know, videos and so on. So what do you think? Like, who we are? Creative or technical? What do you think? Technical. Okay. What about others' opinion? Creative, yes. Yeah. So 
let's let's take an example more creative less technical because we're not uh, dealing with like you know uh, the computer security computers like you know troubleshooting with there into creating ads our business is there in like you know making ads like you know using those softwares where i can create different ads so we are the creative person we are not like you know, the technical person here right so at this point what we want to see that if any problem happens to the computers right that might be the issue happens right so who will take care of the computer related problem that's a main important question here. now who will going to take this computer related problem for that we must have an IT infrastructure team. We have like, you know, the IT infrastructure team who have been going to take care of like, you know, what are the issues happens? What are the problem happens and all. But as if now we just started the business, we are the two person with the four IT assets. So it means like we are too small to hire an IT person. We can't afford to be have an IT person at this point. Here. So at this point, what I'll do it, I'll be involving some AMC. There is some third party company which are going to give us the support. Annual maintenance company we can see that. So we got an agreement with them. They say, like, you know, if any software issues happens, there will be a 24 hours time they will gonna resolve it. If any hardware issues are there, they're going to be resolved in three days. Let's take an example. And this is the process called as a SLA, service level agreement. So better need to be understand in every project that might be required like you know if i give you some additional information about that there's a multiple vendors are there like you know there are there are the vendor coordinations must be required for the project we need a different third party supports like you know to do the small task so mostly of an organizations may hire different type of third party vendors like you know performing some specific operations so they have a certain sla's they have work orders they have like you know work level agreement they need to know, like we need to know as a customer, as a as a main main service provider, we need to know like what are the collaboration, where they have been contributing to this project here, what sort of like you know the operation they are doing. I've been there into the budget, I've been there into the timeline and so on. So that is called as a SLA. We call it as a service level agreement. And for that, we are going to pay them something like ten thousand USD per annum. We got dealer, like, you know, we got a team and it's working on it. So like this, we started a business. Now one, one month, one year is completed. We went to the next year. Now what happens in the next year, if you can see that, the next year we have increased our team. Now it was just two person. Now we have 20 team. This 20 team is a design team, sales team, marketing team, finance team, HR team, and so on. So as we have increased the team, now, do you think like the asset list also the same? Last time we have seen the four IT assets. Is that the skill we have the four IT assets? Obviously, no. The assets need to also be get increased here. Now, at this time, we have increased this asset list to the 30 here. So as you can see that we started the business, we started with like, you know, 20 team, uh, two team with the four IT assets. So the team increase, the asset list also increase. Now at this point, the AMC also increased the price. Last year we paid them, paid them the ten thousand US rate. Now they are asking us to pay forty thousand US rate. Now what do you think at this point here? I want you to just think, like you know, as we are paying the forty thousand USD to them, like you know, even though we not get immediate support, there might be a certain timeline. There is a certain SLA are there. Based on that, we are going to get the support. So at this point, is that still be depends on the third party or we should have our own team here? What do you think there is? What do you think? We should have our own team or we should still depends on third party? Own team, it will be a better idea, right? Yes. So at this point, we got it our own team, the system team, like we can see generally an IT guy, which are going to give us support, which are going to take care of like, you know, all the related issues if it is happens to the computers, hardware, software, and so on. Now, one more year is completed. We went to the third year now. Now, what happens at the third year? We have increased our team, like, you know, 200 team we have it, 300 IT assets we have it. 
now this is like you know including the some asset list like hrm crm like the you know, customer relationship management uh where we can have like you know all the company details hrm contain the cust- employees details that like employee attendance salaries addresses and so on we have like you know file servers we have like you know something called as a email server so this is a sum of like you know process where we can be able to see it so human resource management systems where we are managing file server we are managing email server we are managing so this is how where we have it so we have like you know there are the several components are there so as we have the increase the network component as we have like you know some higher network here the system team will not be able to handle like you know all the issues which is happens on the network they are into the system only it's like you know if we are hiring a driver right you know if you are hiring a driver the main intention of our driver they should be skill up to drive a car well maintain a car neat he should be a proper documented license holder he should have some good experience in driving a car if you're going for a long journey suddenly your tire punctured happens so you must be expecting like you know driver must have the at least the skill set he must be able to change the tire like you know use some step change and so on we know that this is the requirement we have where we have but suppose the main engine failed due to some mechanical problem or something like you know a uh, transmission problem happens some your engine got broken for a certain reason so at that point are you be going to accept that uh, expecting that like you know your driver should be get fixed those issues say say me in the chat are you be going to accept that the driver should be your expectation that they, that should be get fixed by your driver what do you think guys driver or we need to have some special team no right are you expecting that to be get fixed by the driver say yes or no michael says yes how is yes michael see is it is not a special mechanic is is not a service right so basic troubleshoot it can do it but for a specific problems there will be a specific team are there right so driver team will only able to drive the car well but they not able to fix some major issues happens in the engine for that the mechanical mechanic team will be there right michael are you there with me are you getting my point what i'm trying to explain you yes yes sir we need a mechanic here so we need some expert team who can fix who, who have an skill set which can be able to like you know fix those issues so that need to be taken to the service center that need to be get fixed there right so those are the things are there the so similar way what i want you to say that yeah so what i want you to relate here the system team are there to deal with the system related issues for the network related process we have the network engineers so network engineer is designing the network architecture they'll see the different component they'll see the transmission issues if it is happen so what are the devices how the devices is working where the devices get frails like how we need to handle those devices so there are like you know the certain areas are there where the network team are there which are performing the certain task and they're taking care of those assets they're seeing like the entire network how it works where where the where the problem is going on what are the root causes there in the network and so on. with the help of that we have added our network team so we got the system team we got the network team we started the business with the two person now we have the 200 team with us we have the 200 team here now when when we have the 200 team at this point so what do you think guys are we growing or not we're growing a business we got some good reputation in the market now with the help of that we got some very good project from top mnc let's take an example mercedes benz mercedes as launching his new product and the mercedes has chosen us like you know to do the like you know advertising part 
to run like you know the advertising process so we have done we have taken a very good project now we involved with this project the entire team is working there is a celebrity shoot is going on because they have given a like you know the product launch date before that the advertising should be happen so we are the advertising partner for them so we started working on those advertising so we hire like you know we went with the different type of uh celebrities that like uh, footballs or like you know actors actors and so on we have like you know all the all all the process which need to be get designed so like you know that can be a graphically can be represent those model and and so on like you know photo shoots and so on the process will be done so we we have like you know the several things where we can see that like you know the entire team start working in order to complete this act with all their efforts all their perfections everything so even the client is also happy we have been working from the six last six months because we got it a very good project and we also have created a very good reputation in the market we started with the two person and we have 200 team and we have done multiple projects with this team now everything is going smoothly everything is fine and we got a very good project and entire team is working and everybody says like you know now we're going to get top in multinational companies which are going to approach us for the advertising process and our business is going to be get like you know the wider and with with the good growth we have been going to explore it so everybody were happy like you know even the client is also happy because we are we are submitting like you know all the work showing them sample everything is done so almost eight months we have put in all efforts and all things is completed now like you know we are about to be get submit this ad given to the final touch up is there which our team is going to be like the team is working and then we are going to hand over this ad to our the project is completed to the our client here this is what where we are about to be doing so everybody is happy suddenly what happens our finance team have received one invoice our finance team have received an invoice that invoice contain the malware malware is the thing but the malicious code we can see that so this malware enter into the system here we can see that it's enter into the system from here what happens it spread it's called as a ransomware spread to all the system all the missions are landed and useless here it means like a bad rabbit enter into the system ransomware is a program which can lock your computer or it can be encrypt your data and the attackers will ask to pay you the ransom here like you know and unless if you not pay the ransom you're not be going to get an access to it so it means like there is this page is access the the computers the, the entire network is accessed by an attackers they have attack on this one no they have locked everything like you know they say like you know pay me certain amount and then you've been going to get an access to that if you're not paying you will not get it it comes into like you know they've been asking into the bitcoin and some digital money they've been demanding it so crypto cryptocurrency they be like you know uh, are demanded because that is untrust uh, untraceable uh, process are there so they have their own method like you know they have created but now it's in a very difficult situation because all system all database all backup systems everything last storage backup also got encrypted they're not able to get an access any data yet which like your machines are we we not able to open the software we not able to backup anything we can't do it at this point so what do you think like is that we go to the client and say that we got a cyber attack we can't be able to complete your project what do you think guys shall we go to the client and say that the skew that we got a cyber attack we all the project is got delay or we should have negotiations with the attacker what do you think at this point we can't say that right we can't we can't go there and say that like you know we got a cyber attack we we have those process so we need to fix this problem by doing some process but the data is very critical because we have invested a lot of like you know a lot of uh, amount on that like you know almost millions of like huge dollars we have invested here in very simple way to create this so at this point we can't go to the client and give them an excuse that this is happened so 
so it's better the way where we have a proper negotiation team and we negotiate we pay certain thing and we have to come out with this situation this is only the process where we have it if we not come out with this situation then it will be a problem for that because our reputation will be lost even the client will be not happy and and so on so it's a better we need to take care of this we need to have the proper negotiation team and we have to come out with this situation see. so for that we have paid certain things certain ransom and so on that's not uh, actually the right way but anyhow we have to come out with the situation we have paid that because we have not built the security here we build it all our business here so if you remember in the last session why what i said you that building a business making a business into the successful running like you know creating a good services yes that's a this is important but the equal efforts we need to put for the securing the business because if you're not if your business is not secure and if you have a very good services also the people are not interested to get an access to your service people never share the private like you know information that like you know that can be a credit card debit card that's all are the critical information they can't share your their data and so on and your business will be not there so that's the reason we should have the negotiating team like you know which need to be have that need to be like you know do the proper process and come out with the situation right so this is this is the situation where we have to come out with this but this is just a simple example where we are discussing about this like you know how we need to come out so we have the proper negotiations and we are trying to come out with the situation so what what happens in the next year as we got to know that the cyber attack may happens for that again it may happen so for that we have added like you know the security team here we got the endpoint security team which is install all the endpoints related security like you know technologies and the team which are there together been working on this are the team which has added here now we got like you know the endpoint security team which have been taking care of it the entire security operations but securing endpoints is not an important part yes that is certain level and important but attack may happens on the network so like you know we need to secure the network so the network security team are there which have been taking care of like you know firewall intelligent detection system web gateway email gateway and so on so these are the several technologies which they have been using in order to secure it now we got it like you know this is this is how we got this team which have been working like you know we have installed the entire process which is required here so that that is a securing the network here but as you can see that we are growing a business so we have started the business in new york usa now we have like you know hyderabad india so multiple countries we are starting and they are connecting with the vpns and they are working together so all the team is working like you know together with the common network and everything is going smooth but as we can see the team also we have it like you know we have some security teams like we can see that we have a uh, system team we have the endpoint security team network security team and so on do you think like the attack it stopped here when we have it is happen obviously no attacks are continuously to be happen that that the attacker will never stop so they try to attack on that they try to like you know take in privilege that is a possible that's a common things are there so attack continuously to be happen but why it is happen because of configuration mistake because of vulnerable software like you know the old software using or it can be the human error so these are the some of the reasons are there where the attack may happen so in order to secure that what we have we have something called as the information security team so information security team what they doing what are their responsibilities are there they are into co conducting the regular audit audit are nothing but finding out the misconfiguration or wrong configurations happens to the system or any unauthorized configuration has changes here so there is a auditors like you know while we are doing audit we can change that the second we are there into the drafting the security policies based on the internal and external policies created and also we have been like you know conducting the user awareness training in order to secure those assets so this is how the process are there where the information security team is working and taking this process but apart from that what is next because audit is not enough 
because if we can see that let's take an example audit done in the week of last week of march last week of march the auditor that they find out all the vulnerable software they have done the misconfigurations troubleshooting and everything it's all done no audit has done in the last week of march but after that the configuration mistake is taken first week of april is that possible somebody have done some wrong configuration in the month of april yes or no it's it can be a possible right everyone yes that that might be a chance somebody have done some changes like you know they they may have done some configuration mistake here so that did to be get fixed here so when it is going to be fixed the mistake will only be get identified in the next audit so whenever we are scheduling and next audit in the month of june here. so it means like we are going to leave this week configuration as it is more than 2 months here. it's like we are going to leave this week configurations for next 2 months and that will be a more trouble for them because if we leave this it will be a more trouble because attack may happen so what we have to do at this point so for that we have continuous monitoring system continuous monitoring system is nothing but the sock team here the security operation center team monitor all the assets network endpoints like you know what are the technology we use what are the vrx stations we have everything so that there is a sock team which are going to monitor 24 by 7 365 days they are the live team which which they going to monitor they detect they investigate and they respond to the cyber threat here so the sock team are there which have been taking care of the entire assets they have been taking care of like you know all the security measures based on that where they can secure the entire organization as it is this is how the team are there this is how like you know they have been working so this is at the several team where we got it as a sock team the security operation team which is i said you that which is a very important team for an organization because they 24 by 765 day they are the proactive they monitor the different asset they find out like you know what type of vulnerabilities are there and they're going to fix on it uh, even they're going to stop the attackers at the initial stage i believe till here is clear to everybody is that so everyone see me yes if it is all clear all right all right yeah it's a just a big decisions like you know we are going to get into the advance also zira it is just a beginning sessions like you know introduction session we can see that because the course is designed from scratch to that part so this is how where we have done this like you know now in coming sessions we're going to discuss some more detail about the technology and process how it's happens all right so that's it for today's session thank you very much for listening me see you tomorrow in the next session and we'll discuss more topic on this till that take care bye everybody You're welcome.